Hey everybody, this is Andrew of MMA Sucker. With us, we have Danny Sabatello. We take you on Rosario Deron at PFL 8, August 16th, next Friday. You can check out ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Danny, sir, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so it's been almost uh, almost a year since you've had your last fight. I'm just curious to know what you've been doing since then uh, till uh, about now. Yeah, I've been training like a motherfucker. You know, if it were up to me, I would fight a zillion times a year. It just unfortunately hasn't happened that way. You know, a lot of people in this MMA are pussies and don't accept the contract and don't really want to fight me. I understand I bring a little bit of a different thing to the table when you fight me. Uh, but a lot of these fans just don't really understand that a lot of these fighters pick and choose their opponents and are pussies. So unfortunately, I haven't fought since last year, but I feel like a little bit of a caged animal going to this one. You know, I haven't fought in a while and all I do is fucking love to fight. I've been training nonstop at the best gym in the world, American top team. So I think you're going to see just a new and improved Danny Sabatello August 16th. Mm. Uh, so was, was it a case of you were being offered fights or, uh, or you were accepting fights and then they would go try to find somebody and then th those people would say no? Could you just uh, anything you could just tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, a little bit of everything. You know, I just, uh, not to go into too much detail, I have never turned down a fight. I have never pulled out of a fight. I never will. Um, but a lot of these guys can't really say the same. Um, so it just really hasn't lined up for me to fight until August 16th, next Friday. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. You know, if, if you don't have time fighting, then obviously you have time to be spent in the gym. And that's what I've been doing is spending time in the gym. You know, I don't really take fucking vacations. That's really for pussies. All my concern is for fucking fighting and getting better at that, becoming the best bantamweight in the entire world. And why would I be taking a vacation when I could be at the best gym in the world? So ever since my last fight, I've been in the gym every single day, twice a day, getting better. Um, and, and that's just bottom line, what I fucking love to do. You know, the gym is my vacation. You know, that is my happy place. That's where I'm happiest and having my most fun. And, and that's where I should. And that's where I should be and where I belong. Long. In case if people don't know where you do train, you train at ATT under Mike Brown, uh, Kyoji Horiguchi, Rising Champions there, Kayla Harrison. Um, I'm drawing a whole blanket. A whole bunch of people come from there. Whole, whole great uh, uh, group of fighters. What makes that gym? What makes Mike Brown? What's, what makes that just the best place to train at? Well, we're in the best at every single category. You know, you look at our coaches and we got the best coaches in the game. You look at our fighters, we got the best fighters in the game. You look at our manager, our owner, and Dan Lambert, and he's the best in the game. You know, everybody kind of feeds off each other when you have such a high level gym and very, very skillful and accomplished people. You have a sense of, man, I, I don't just want to do this for myself, but I also want to do this for my team. I don't want to let them down. You know, we demand excellence at that gym and we demand championships. And if you're not pushing for a championship every single fucking day, then that gym isn't for you. So when you have that type of attitude and everybody going hard and being motherfuckers, but also somewhat of a family style gym, it just breeds champions. And, and we are a very different gym than everybody else. If you've ever trained at the gym, you see why we are the best gym in the world uncontested. Um, but it's just something that you have to witness and and be in to really fully grasp because all oh, this is just champions you know you look at my training camp right now and it's filled with sparring Mozart Evloev and Pedro Munoz you know two very high level guys and those are two types of guys that people can't get at their fucking gym so we have the best everything so one of the things I'm curious to know and that other people were asking me to ask you was uh what is your status with Bellator, PFL, uh, like whatever you can talk about, like that. What, like, what is your current status with each company or one of the companies? Well, I'm the only one that's both. You know, this fight coming up uh, is a bantamweight fight, but the PFL doesn't have bantamweight, but it's the Italian gangster Danny Sabatello, so they are going to have one. You know, with that fight, I feel like I'm representing the bantamweights in this organization, and I'm going to show off for them. You look at our bantamweight division in Bellator, and it's the best bantamweight division, regardless of promotion. Our top 10 is absolutely elite. We are well-rounded guys that have grappling and striking. So, I think I am putting on for these guys. It's going to be a very uh, competitive division going forward. If you just look at all the names in there. Um, and, and I don't know the future of the bantamweight division in the PFL, but if, uh, if it's me representing them August 16th, there's nobody better than me representing them. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's uh, talk about that fight August 16th against Lozaro. Dayron undefeated, uh, one year older than you, but you know, 
pretty good. It's still new to the game of fighting, only eight fights. So uh, have you seen his stuff or do you know anything about him? Anything you want to say about him? Yeah, he fucking sucks. Uh, I've watched a few of his fights and he's just sloppy everywhere. He's not as good as me in any, you know, stand up, grappling, jujitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, kickboxing. The list goes on and on and I'm just so much better than him. Um, he's undefeated and I love fighting undefeated people because their confidence is so high and there's nothing better than having somebody let down on themselves after getting KO'd, which I will be doing in round one, August 16th, KOing him. Um, so uh, I know he sucks and he's going to be very confident because he has that undefeated record. Um, when you're undefeated, it, it always sucks having that first loss. And I absolutely love being that guy. You know, I want to spoil his party and rain on his parade. Um, and it's going to be in devastating fashion. You know, this is a guy that I can take advantage of and exploit and set traps. And I'm going to be doing that the whole fight until I finish him. Um, so I don't really know too much about him. I don't really give a fuck. I know he's undefeated and I know he's going to get his fucking face bashed in. Well, because my second question you just answered already was uh, any predictions for how the fight will go? You said round one knockout? Yeah, it will be a round one knockout. Um, I'm going to play with him. I'm going to toy with him. You know, it, I, I'm not going to 100% guarantee a knockout just because sometimes in his fights, I see that there's so many openings. And if there's an opening, I'm going to take it. You know, it, it might have to be a TKO. It might have to be a submission. But regardless, it will be a round one finish. Hmm. Uh, when you say and you did say he sucks, so I just I I would like to just hear more. Like, what is about him, in your opinion, that that makes him like not a good fighter? Yeah, he's very slow. He has low volume. Um, he's too short for me. Um, when I see him get tired, he he doesn't throw too much. When he gets tired, he shoots in on a lazy bad shot. But the opponents that he's fought don't really have wrestling, so they can't defend. He's just been fortunately enough to have opponents that suck more than him. But he, he's very bad. You know, everything about him is trash. Uh, the stand-up, again, is very slow. He doesn't set anything up. He throws one strike at a time. When he shoots, he usually shoots to the weak side, which is a problem. Um, I don't want to put – I don't want to give away too much. Uh, you know, that could obviously go into my game plan. But everywhere, he's just a little bit sloppy, and, and, and there's going to be rooms for me to finish everywhere. Hmm. Well, uh, he is a – he has – you said that before uh, that fires have turned you down. What? How do you feel? At least feel that he's accepted that he's the one who's decided to accept you as his opponent. Well, this is going to be his uh, first fight in a major promotion, so I, I think he views this as he kind of had to. You know, this is his fight. This is his way into this promotion. Um, I think they had to do that because most of these guys are saying no or making excuses. Uh, but, you know, props to him for being the guy that I have to absolutely KO and, and put on a highlight reel. Um, obviously, he's Cuban, so he's going to be a little bit tough and he's going to be a little bit explosive. He kind of has a little bit of a UL Romero style fighting, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, I guess thank you to him for taking the fight, but sorry, I have to fuck you up. Mm. Uh, one of the things I've also have, I follow you on uh, on social media is that uh, you are calling for or will be want to fight in Ryzen, I've noticed. I, I, I don't know, is that still an interest or is that still something you have uh, in mind? Well, you know, when I went to Japan last year, it was just the absolutely coolest thing ever. You know, the coolest arena I've ever fought in is Sayatama Arena in Japan. And the coolest arena I've ever been in, period, is Sayatama Arena in Japan. So I know that PFL and Bellator has that card December 31st on New Year's Eve, and they combine it with Ryzen. I would love to do that. I love going over there to Japan. Their fans are very knowledgeable. They probably have the best fans and most knowledgeable fans. Um, I would love to go over there and, and fight, but first things first, I have to take care of business August 16th. You know, in my eyes, I fuck this guy up August 16th. I get one fight in Chicago or Abu Dhabi, and then I would love to fight December 31st over there in Japan um, you know, before my career is up, I have to fight multiple times in Japan. I love going over there. Hmm. Uh, I know you, I think you also put out a tweet, if I remember correctly, it says something that you, 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 you anointed yourself the Ryzen Bantamweight champion. Have you been following that whole, the whole division and kind of the craziness that's been going on with that whole thing with Kai leaving and all that stuff? Yeah, with Kai being the champion and him leaving, that leaves room for a champion. And I am the best Bantamweight that's ever fought there. So by rule, I am the rising champion. I just have to get this PFL 
or Bellator belt now, and I'll be a double champion. If somebody needs me to prove that, I would have no problem going over there to Ryzen and representing the PFL and, and fucking up one of their guys. You know, when I think about my fight December 31st over there in Japan, if I get that, I want one of their rising guys. I want one of their Japan guys. I want to fuck one of those guys up. I want to represent the PFL and show how elite we are. I want to have a massive fight, PFL versus Ryzen. Let's see what fucking happens with the fireworks December 31st. I'm very excited for that. But obviously, I'm very excited for August 16th. First things first, I just have massive fights in the future, uh, and I'm very excited for all of them. You did say uh, you that's one of your goals is to fight in Japan. I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, uh, how many more years do you see, are you giving yourself to fight? Do you have like a timetable, I want to do this, or I'm going to fight till I'm 35 or something like that? Yeah, I don't have an exact timetable, but just because I can do a lot of things I can't tell the future, but I would love to fight until I'm 56. Um, I think the way I fight, I'm very smart. I don't get hit. I don't take punishment. And I'm just a dog. I'm a motherfucker. You know, if I'm not fighting, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to be doing. You know, I don't have, you know, a plan for when I retire, what I'm going to be doing. I don't know. I'm going to be a fucking piece of shit because all I want to do is fucking fight. So if we're up to me, I would fight fucking forever. Um, I want to do this for as long as I can. Um, and, and I just have to take care of business and fuck all these guys up. I have to be the undisputed champion before I could even think about any of that shit. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know if you did, if you saw the fight between, uh, Apache Mix and uh, and Magomed. Uh, did you have an opinion on who won that fight between the two? Yeah, I thought it was a very close fight. Um, when it went to the decision and the judges' scorecards, I didn't know who they were going to say. I, I don't think I had it for Patchy or the Russian. Uh, I just kind of thought it was a toss up. Uh, I just kind of thought it was a sloppy fight. Both those guys aren't very good. I think I fuck them both up. You know, I obviously I already fought the Russian, but if you look at the way. That fight went down. I took him down very easily in the beginning and then just got caught. That's what happened in, happens in the sick, crazy sport of MMA. I would love to get that one back. Uh, but I did see the fight, you know, I, and and I think I fuck up both those guys. I, I don't really know who won that fight. Um, but Patchy does have the belt. He's going to be fighting my leftovers and Higo. I don't know who's going to win there. I don't really give a fuck. But I am coming for that belt, and I will get that belt. Hmm. Um, so I'm curious, I know that you have a lot of uh, opinions on people in MMA and all that stuff. I'm curious to know, who do you like the most in your sport? Who's the person who you, who you would say that you, that you like the most, if you have That's one it. besides yourself, I should have said besides yourself, or is there anybody, anybody at American top team? You know, I'm a very teammate oriented guy. I love my teammates. I'm very nice to them. I'm very loyal to them. I watch all my teammates fights, but if you're not an American top team, I don't give a fuck about you. I probably fucking hate you. I don't really have favorite fighters. I don't really have somebody that I look up to or anything like that. I have the best fighters over there in South Florida at American top team of coconut Creek. You know, we have the best fighters there. So why wouldn't it be one of those guys? So if you're American top team, yeah, you're 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 my favorite fighters. If you're not American top team, you fucking suck. Uh, you also brought something else that I wanted to ask you as well, um, because you said that Japanese fans are the best. They're the most knowledgeable. And I would like to posit between the difference between them and fans, you know, in the West, whether that be Europe or America or e anyone who, who you've fought in front of. And just tell us, like, what is it that about the Japanese fans that you, that, uh, that you enjoy the most about about them being uh, fighting in front of them well the japanese fans understand the sport and you know it if you go into their arena and how they view it and how they watch it they completely understand what's going on they understand that there's traps that are being made they understand that there's setups they understand the striking the grappling everything you know they're very invested in the fights you know, I, I sometimes read my DMs, which is 90% filled with dumb fucking idiots telling me they're going to kill me. But some of the times it is the Japanese fans, and I'm just blown away by how they're able to pick apart some of my technique and really analyze it. And that's just not how it is with most of the Americans. They kind of watch this sport and just yell and just don't really understand what the fuck's going on. They just, oh, knock them out. Yeah, fuck yeah. They just see two guys swinging. Uh, but that's really not the case with this sport. It's actually chess with our human God-given bodies. Um, and in Japan, they understand that. So they're very knowledgeable in Japan. They understand fighting and and the chess that's behind it. In America, you know, I'm not going to say 100% of the fans in America are dumb, but most of them are fucking idiots. So I will say that. Um, you know, the Japan fans are just, they're awesome. They're great. The American fans, some of them are great. Most of them fucking suck. 
I, I don't know if you had, did you, were you able to interact with any of the Japanese fans per chance as well? I also hear that a lot of fighters say that they're just more, I guess, pleasant or they're just, they're, I guess. Well, just analyzing the Japanese culture when I'm over there in Japan, I, I spent a good amount of time over there. They're just very nice people in general. I did interact with some of the fans before the fight and after the fight, um, more so before the fight, because when we pull up to my hotel, there was a bunch of Japanese people waiting to take pictures and autographs and, and all that stuff. And none of them really even spoke English too much, but you could tell that they were trying to speak English just so I could understand them. You know, they give a lot of effort and they're just very nice people. Um, so it was nice interacting with them. I, I would love to interact with them some more next time I'm over there. Um, because they're just very unique and very different. They're, the the Sayatama Arena is absolutely massive arena, and they absolutely hack it. So there's a ton of fans over there, and they absolutely understand the sport, and they love the sport. Uh, we had a question come in from a fan. Uh, speaking of, uh, of Japanese MMA, uh, Unify Rules Podcast, he wants to know which rule set – do you prefer? I don't think. Uh, well, well, which rule set do you prefer? The uh, unified rules or the riser rules? I don't think you fought under riser rules with soccer kicks and all that stuff, right? No, I've never fought with the riser rules, but I like the rule set whichever one I'm fighting in. You know, I can acclimate and accustom to whichever rule set there is. You know, with this fight, August sixteenth in the PFL, I won't be able to do elbows. That's okay, no problem. I'll just finish them a different way. I'll slice them open with my fists, with my knees, with my ankles. That's fine. Um, if we are allowed to do soccer kicks in, in a rise and fight, good. I'll punt this fucking guy's head to Jupiter. That's totally cool too. So I don't really have a favorite. Um, right now I am in Bellator and PFL. So those are my favorite rule sets. Mm -hmm. uh, but going forward, th this is a fight. It, it doesn't matter if, if I can box and use wrestling and all that shit. It doesn't really fucking matter to me. And I know that you just said that you really don't, that you don't take vacations, no days off, but when you're done at the gym, you go home, you unwind. Like, what is it that you like to do that just, uh, you know, take your mind off uh, off a hard day's training? Think about fighting. You know, we, me and Mike Brown, we record my sessions. So I go back and I, and I watch the sessions. You know, I like to spar too, just because that's the most fun practice to me. That's really when you test yourself and you kind of check your technique and you try new things. So we're always sparring. So I always have footage of myself sparring and trying to evolve into a better fighter. And again, this isn't something where, oh, I feel like this is a fucking job. You know, I need to go home and I unwind. Obviously not every single day at the gym is amazing. And obviously not every single day you wake up and are, and are totally energized. You know, I live two minutes away from the beach. Of course, I want to go get fucked up and head on girls at the beach. But most of the time, I just want to go to the fucking gym. So I don't really have a hobby out there. You know, I don't play video games. I, I don't do any of this shit. I don't take trips. Um, again, all I want to do is just fight. Think about fighting. Um, I do love to party and celebrate, celebrate my victories. But when I'm done partying for a week and getting fucked up with my friends and family celebrating, I get right back in the gym. And that's what I want to be doing. Mm. Um, so like when you say fucked up, you mean like drunk and like all that stuff? Okay. Just, but, just drunk. I, I only drink. I'm, I'm a heavy believer in not doing drugs. I don't even smoke weed. I know a lot of fucking MMA fighters think it's so cool to like smoke weed. I don't smoke weed. Um, if you do, that's okay. Weed was cool in high school, but I don't do it. Any, uh, you know, but I, I do like to drink and have my fun with my friends. But yeah, no, no drugs. I've never done a drug, and I never will. Mm, gotcha. So, and one of the other questions I got to ask is, uh, and I know that a lot of my friends from New York will probably want to know Chicago pizza. Why is Chicago pizza king? Why is it better than New York pizza? Well, here's the thing. Everybody hears Chicago pizza and they think a deep dish, which, yeah, it's very unique and it's very good. Shout out Lou Malnati's. It's the best deep dish pizza there is. So very good. But Chicago also has very good thin crust. So the versatility of Chicago pizza trumps anywhere because we can do something unique like deep dish or you can go somewhere on the south side called Vito and Nick's, which is also very good and it's thin crust. So we can have anything, you know, let's say one day you want a deep dish. Boom. Okay. Go get a deep dish. It's fucking amazing. Now you want thin crust. We also have very good thin crust. So we have it all. Mm. I like that. I do like deep dish. I will say that I very much love deep dish. Uh, before you go, uh, Dan, I want to give you an opportunity to plug your gym sponsors, social media, if you want. Yeah. Go ahead. You can go ahead and plug all that stuff. Yep. No plug. Just Dayron's a bitch. Okay, well, that was going to be my next question was uh, if you have any last comment you'd like to say to uh, Dayron. 
for it, but I guess you already said that. Uh, unless you well, want to expect, want... he, he's, a, he's a massive bitch. He's not just a bitch. He's a massive bitch. Gotcha. And you can see Danny Sabatello take on Lazaro De Ron August sixteenth, next Friday. PFL eight available on ESPN Plus. Danny, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to your fight. I'm looking forward to your return, man. And hopefully, we'll get to see you in Ryzen sometime and punt a uh, someone's head all the way to Jupiter. Yep, looking forward to it. Thank you. No, thank you, sir. We'll see you.